this property of not being the same as your mirror image, what we might call it in everyday life is being handed, right? And we can think about objects from everyday life that are handed to get a sense of what we mean by this. Things like screws, where a right-handed screw turns differently than a left-handed screw. Your hands, your right hand and left hand, feel different when you're interacting with other handed objects, such as scissors, which are right handed and left handed, right? Depending on which hand feels more natural to use those scissors with, right? So, this idea of being non identical to your mirror image does have and evoke this idea of handedness from everyday life. In chemistry, we give it a bit more of a formal term. It's called chiral. Chiral means handed, and chirality is the property of handedness. A molecule that's not identical to its mirror image is called chiral, or handed. Many molecules are identical to their mirror images. These are called achiral. They lack this property of being handed. So, of course, your hands themselves are individually chiral, and there are many, many molecules that are chiral. One example are the biochemical amino acids. Most amino acids, with the exception of glycine, are chiral, are handed. There are two enantiomers of the amino acids, and interestingly, only one of those two enantiomers is prevalent in the biochemistry of life. And you can see on the slide here that the two hands of two hypothetical amino acids are shown, and these are not the same. And this is a bit of an easier case where you can think about these in three dimensions and see that, for example, if we tried to line up the R and COOH groups, the NH2 and H groups would not be able to align. And likewise, if we tried to line up the H and the NH2, the COOH and the R groups would not line up. So these two molecules are not superimposable, and I encourage you to pause the video and verify that, either by building a model, a couple of tetrahedral models, thinking through this by drawing on paper, or just thinking through it in your mind. We alluded to this idea previously that molecules that lack an internal plane of symmetry are chiral. And one way you can think about this is, well, to generate the mirror image, we reflect through a mirror plane. But if we put that plane just somewhere inside the molecule, the reflection is still going to be the mirror image. We just happen to be using a plane that's inside the molecule. When any of those reflections generates a molecule that is necessarily different from what we started with, the molecule has the property of handedness. And this corresponds to lacking what's called a plane of symmetry, a reflection plane that leaves the appearance of the molecule completely unchanged. We'll look at an example of a molecule that has a plane of symmetry on the next slide. But here we have an example of two molecules that are enantiomers of each other that are mirror images that are non-identical, each of which lacks a plane of symmetry. So again, we're imagining putting a mirror up between these two molecules uh, to help us see that they are mirror images of each other. For example, reflecting this H through a mirror plane perpendicular to the screen would put the H right here. Same with the fluorine, same with this chlorine and same with this bromine. So these are mirror images of each other, but they are not the same, right? Pause the video and try to superimpose them. You'll find that you're not able to do so. And each of these lacks an internal plane of symmetry. Wherever we put that mirror plane, right, maybe we try to put it you know, so that the F and H are in the plane, well, that'll exchange the positions of the Br and Cl, so we'll end up with a new different molecule, the enantiomer, in fact, of what we started with. So lacking a plane of symmetry, is a sufficient condition for us to conclude that a molecule is chiral. Let's make that connection one more time. Lacking a plane of symmetry makes a molecule chiral or handed. And think about your hands. Your hands lack a plane of symmetry. Your hands lack that plane of symmetry that your body as a whole has, and so each of your hands is handed while your body as a whole is not. Now, molecules that have a plane of symmetry are achiral. Molecules that have a plane of symmetry are identical to their mirror images, in the same way that you, being symmetric, are identical to your mirror image. And many, many molecules actually have planes of symmetry. CH3Cl is one example. So let's take a look at this molecule now. CH3Cl is chloromethane, and its plane of symmetry includes the chlorine and this H that is lined up with the carbon-chlorine bond. 
let's take a look. It's actually got multiple planes of symmetry, but the one that jumps out at me is the one that includes uh, the chlorine and just, for example, this CH bond that's sticking up, right? We could line up the other CH bonds with the CCL bond and generate planes of symmetry as well. But let's click here and take a look at these planes of reflection that are symmetry planes, planes of symmetry. So here the plane of symmetry is drawn kind of in transparent orange. And you can see that it includes the carbon-chlorine bond and one of the carbon-hydrogen bonds. And we can imagine reflecting through this plane, that's going to move the H that is at the top down below the plane at an equal distance to where that other H is sitting. And it's going to move that bottom H right up where the top H is sitting. And the appearance of the molecule after this operation will remain completely unchanged. So let's kind of watch it. Let's watch it happen, and you'll see that the appearance of the molecule remains completely unchanged. So did you catch that? The two H's that are not in the plane are changing places, but the molecule looks exactly the same. This is what makes this a plane of symmetry. Applying the operation of reflecting through the plane doesn't change the appearance of the molecule. The other planes of symmetry here are just lined up with the other carbon-hydrogen bonds. So here's yet another one, and again, we can play it to see that doing this operation, reflecting through that plane, does not change the appearance of the molecule as a whole. That's what makes this a plane of symmetry. So to sum up one more time, molecules that contain a plane of symmetry are achiral. They lack this property of being handed because they're identical to their reflections. We reflect through the plane of symmetry. The appearance of the molecule remains completely unchanged. This tells us that the mirror image, the reflection, is identical to the starting molecule. So the starting molecule lacks that property of being handed being not the same as its mirror image. At this point, you may be thinking, why do we care about any of this? You know, the funny thing is, if you're left-handed, you probably have a sense already of why we care, right? My mother and sister are both left-handed. We've got a family of left-handed females and right-handed males in my family, and they're very acutely aware that the world is built for right-handed people, right? Um, every time we sat down, you know, at the dinner table, we were bumping elbows and all that kind of thing. But we also care about handedness on the molecular level because handed molecules that are enantiomers can have different properties from each other. And a good point to introduce this has to do with light, actually, because light can be thought of as having two handed components. So we can think about a plain polarized light wave as actually consisting of half right-handed light and half left-handed light. And a handed molecule will interact differently with those two hands of the plane polarized light wave, leading to what's called optical activity, the rotation of the plane of plane polarized light when the light passes through the material. So here's what this looks like. We start with a plane polarized light wave where the plane of the oscillations of the electromagnetic field of the light are in, let's say, the plane of the screen. We send it through a chiral material, for example, a solution of one enantiomer of a chiral substance. When the light comes out, we find that that plane has rotated slightly, and we can detect this using optical um, instruments, optical filters like polarizers and, and that kind of thing. That rotation of the plane of light is what's known as optical activity. And we can actually label enantiomers based on how they rotate light. Plus enantiomers rotate light in one direction, and minus enantiomers rotate light in the other direction. And for example, for a given enantiomer, if that molecule is plus, then its enantiomer is minus in the opposite uh, sort of direction or at the opposite angle. So for example, if we take a light wave um, polarized this direction and we send it through the plus enantiomer, maybe it rotates this way. If we take that same compound but the opposite enantiomer and send the light through, notice the rotation is in the opposite sense or opposite direction or at the opposite angle. An equal mixture of two enantiomers causes no rotation of the plane at all since rotation by the right-handed enantiomer, so to say, uh, speak, is canceled by rotation in the opposite direction by the left-handed enantiomer. So an equal mixture of two enantiomers actually displays no optical activity. And equal mixtures of enantiomers are common because they are very, very similar in their properties. For example, they react with achiral molecules in exactly the same way. So equal mixtures of enantiomers are very common, and they're referred to as a racemic mixture or a racemate. This is a one-to-one -one or 50-50 equal mixture 
of two enantiomers, two mirror images, one more time, that are not identical to each other. And we can label those, for example, as plus or minus, and this just refers to the sign of optical rotation. By the way, predicting the sign of optical rotation from the structure of a pair of enantiomers is not something that's generally easy to do. It's certainly not something you'll do in introductory or organic chemistry. All we can say in general is that if I know one enantiomer rotates you know, light by an angle of 60, positive 60 degrees, then the other enantiomer will rotate light by negative 60 degrees, all other things being equal.